Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, I wanna apply some of the techniques that I talked about in my previous video using the lasso tool selections in order to create a background composition. And this will be the first part, which is establishing the structure and the forms of this composition. And in a subsequent video, I'll focus on adding some details and other elements to really bring this to life. So let's get started. So I've got my sketch here. First thing I want to think about is I want to think about depth in my composition. I've got foreground, midground, and background elements. I've got leading lines that are establishing this boxy area here, this structure as the focal point. It's kind of a barn or it's an outhouse, whatever you want to call it. It's a man-made structure. The eye immediately goes there because all the other leading lines are kind of pulling us into this direction. So, um, if you want to learn more about composition and layout, there's definitely some videos on that topic. Definitely check it out. In this video, I'm going to focus on applying some of these techniques. So I have to, first of all, think about what kind of atmosphere I want to create. Do I want this to be a sunny scene or do I want it to be more ominous? I think I'm going to make it more ominous. So I'll pick a bluish color. I'm going on the layer underneath my rough pencil sketch and I'll just block this out with the rectangular marquee tool. I'll fill it in with hitting option delete. And now I can divide the composition into foreground, midground, and background layers. I'm going to go for a monochromatic palette just to keep things super easy, at least to start out with. And if I change my mind later on, so be it. So I've got these rocks that are in the foreground here, and I have a couple of choices. This first rock right here looks very angular, and I can use the regular polygon lasso tool. Uh, for this structure. So I'm going to make an outline. I'll hit Command J, Command U, and I'm going to make this dark. I'll go to this other rock right here. It's also fairly rigid. It starts to smooth out here, um, but for now I'll just go ahead and work that shape in. Command J, Command U, and I'll make it not as dark, but it is going to be uh, darker than the blue that we have here. So this is what I have so far, it's some basic shapes. And this tree trunk here, as I mentioned in my previous video, that's an organic structure. Let's go ahead and create that shape, hold down the shift key to add to our selection. Command J, Command U. Let's make that a little bit lighter. And monochromatic palettes are the easiest palettes to work with when you're learning how to work with color. You really can't mess it up uh, as much as you could if you picked every color in the rainbow. So I've got the bush here, again, using the lasso tool, Command J, Command U. Uh, let's make that a little bit darker. And then we've got another tree trunk here. J, Command U. We've got the leaves, Command J, Command U. I'll make that light. Again, I can always tweak these colors. I've got some evergreens. I want to create a little bit of a color differentiation between these two. They're both dark, but one is slightly darker than the other one. So I'll rinse and repeat. And the sign is really what's going to pull us in when we first look at this composition because our eyes are drawn to letters, right? Things that we can read, we're drawn to but I don't want that to be the focal point. So I'm gonna kind of mute those colors. I'm not gonna make it fully white because in a composition that has a lot of medium and dark values, if you have something really bright, the eye will immediately get pulled there. Command J, Command U. I'm just gonna stop saying Command J and Command U because I think you guys are getting this down by heart. But I do believe in the uh, concept of repetition uh, because repetition is something that allows you to develop that muscle memory. So there's a sign, making sure that the pencils layer is still visible. And I've got this fence back here. 
And what I'll do is I'll just use the polygon lasso tool and create that rough outline. And then hold down the shift key and create the crossbars. And every object that I'm creating is going to be on its own layer. I'll switch by hitting the Shift L key to move back to the organic lasso tool or the freeform lasso tool. Command J, Command U. I'll move that layer on top of the fence layer. foreground. So by having things on multiple layers, it makes it just easier to move things uh, around. So this uh, outhouse or whatever you want to call it, that is going to be polygon lasso tool. Why? Because it's got hard edges. I will make this the lightest element. Why? Because that's where I want the viewer's eyes to go to. I'm not really thinking about lighting and shadow just yet. I have that kind of in the back of my mind here. And then there's a few other elements here. I'll just quickly mark those in. I think I've got most of the stuff in now. Okay, so we've got the basic shapes. Let's go ahead and turn off our pencils layer and see what we're working with. So you can start to see that we've got, you know, a lot of shapes. It's still looking very flat. We haven't done anything to kind of give any dimension or texture or form to any of these objects that are here. It's just a very flat dimensionless thing. And you know, there's nothing wrong with this aesthetic. It's just that uh, we could we could really make it so much more than what we see right here. So let's start off by looking at our foreground element here. So we've got our foreground element, we've got some rocks. So I've got this on its own layer. I'll come back in with my regular lasso tool. Uh, we're gonna create a little path. Um, I think I had that in my sketch. Let me turn that layer back on, yeah. It's like something like that. It's path cut and dead ends. Command J, Command U. I'm going to hold down the shift key to create some of that dirt, like so. And then we've got all these rocks. So I'm going to kind of hint at large, medium, and small shapes. Again, holding down the shift key with the freeform lasso tool. If you haven't already watched the previous video where I talk about these techniques in a little bit more depth, go ahead and watch it. I think it'll help you out. So we've got this. Now you can also come back in with your brush tool, which I'm going to do here. Throw in some dots and other doodads. This is my square brush tool. I've got a video where I talk about how do you make your own brushes. Definitely give that one a look-see. There's nothing wrong with buying brushes, but I think there's a lot of satisfaction in making one's own brushes. So do check that out. So I've got these rocks here. And maybe there's some additional rocks in the foreground. It just gives it some character, some visual interest. Okay, so 
Now that we have that in place, let's look at the fence post here. So what you could do, one way that you could actually uh, just work within this area, you could actually use the color lock and that restricts any type of painting to this particular structure right here. Um, but I want to put this on its own layer. I don't want to actually draw on the same layer. I want to keep everything on separate layers. So I don't want to do this. Instead, if I command click on the thumbnail for the layer, it makes that into a selection. So now what I can do is I can go back up one layer and draw my wood grain. And then I can come back in. I want to put some other rocks kind of overlapping this. So I'll make a new layer, move it up top, make that a little bit darker. Okay, so we've got this structure in place. Now we've got these bushes. So if I wanted to work on a specific layer, and I'm not sure which layer this is currently on, I can always go back to my move tool and I can right click and it tells me the layers that are underneath my cursor. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to create a little bit more contrast between the bush and the fence and the evergreen in the background. So I'm gonna make this a little bit lighter. From this point, I can use the freeform lasso tool, make some simple shapes. just to give that some thickness. Then I can come back in with my brush tool and add some variety there. Um, I've got this rock that's in the foreground here. Let's give it some contours. come in with our brush. And we can kind of rinse and repeat this process here. That's, what this is doing is this is actually giving these flat shapes, this illusion that it actually has some form. When you mix light and dark values together, the eye tends to think of it as a uh, something that has some dimension and form. Okay, now what about the uh, tree trunks? Same thing. I can hit the uh, you know command key, select the, the thumbnail. And I'll go in with a darker value. Like so, do the same thing for the other one back here. Maybe I'll make that a little bit lighter. And now let's take care of the, uh, the canopy of this tree. So I'm going to assume here that the bottom most part that's inside the um, canopy is going to be the darkest. So command J, command U. There we go. And I'll just kind of allude to the idea that there are some leaves here like so, I can probably make that a little bit darker. Do the same thing with this tree in the front. I'm doing all this stuff in real time too, so you can see how fast this technique can be implemented. Once you have the basics down, uh, you can really go to town with it. Command J, Command U. Not to mention, I think it's really fun. I think this particular uh, way of working for me just brings me a lot of joy. It's very, very relaxing. All right, now as we get further back in space, we see less and less detail. 
So I don't have to go overboard with some of these elements. I might just kind of allude to the idea that there's, you know, uh, a set of branches. but I don't need to necessarily go into a lot of detail. Uh, now the outhouse, let's see, first of all, let me go to that layer. I'll make this just a little bit lighter. Command click on it, zoom in, go with the darker value. I'm gonna go ahead and create some shingles. Gives it some texture. Now for this bottom side right here, command click on it, make a new layer. Let's make this darker. This kind of style works best when you're dealing with asymmetrical shapes. If you're dealing with very parallel lines, um, it starts to look a little bit odd. If you really look back and study some of the cartoons that use this particular technique, uh, and I need to fill this gap in real quick. Um, you'll see that there's a lot of asymmetricality and that's just part of that aesthetic. It just, you know, um, lends itself to that pretty well. Command J, Command U. And then from here, if I want to add some decorative elements, something that's going to draw the eye. If there's a lot of simple shapes, the eye gets drawn to something that's complex. Let's pick a darker value here. Texture is really, really important. And what I want to do is for the opening here, I want to make that really dark. Just so that it stands apart from the fence post. All right, for the fence post, let's take a look and see what we have. It's layer 14. In this case, I'm gonna use the freeform lasso tool, quickly draw the horizontal areas, holding down the shift key. Command J, Command U. We'll make that a little bit lighter so it stands out a little bit more. And so essentially now I've got the basic structure of this composition. This is comprised of like some wooden slats. So I'm gonna give that a sense of texture too. There might be a little nail. Command J, Command U. I'm not going to worry about the writing on the sign yet. And then, of course, we've got to do something to separate. Um, we don't know where the ground plane actually is, so let's go ahead and establish that. Let's just give it some, you know, some sense of a rolling hill in the background. There we go. And so now the eye is pulled towards this area. Now I've got a lot of cool colors here. I'm working with a monochromatic palette. If you really want the eye to go somewhere, uh, then you want to think about contrast. So one way I can get your eyes right to that spot is if I put something that is bright. So let's just say I put even just like a little dot, or let's just make it even a little bit more ominous by having two circles that are yellow. Because they're really bright and you know, people tend to look for eyes within a painting or a composition. Even though this may not be eyes, that's kind of what is being inferred. The eye moves to that specific spot. So you can see how we were able to quickly make shape into form. And I'll just end this video with one little bonus tip. Um, let's go ahead and add a little bit of separation between the uh, sky and the rest of the contents here. So I'm making a new layer that's right above my background layer and I will pick a soft round brush. 
big soft round brush like so. I'll pick white and I'll just come back in here and just lighten this area up. And if I wish, what I can do is I can go in with some blue and you know, kind of give it a sense of atmosphere. And I haven't even added any shadows or anything else of that nature, but this is just basically working with the lasso tools and working with selections to create something that's visually interesting. If you did find value in this video, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. I wanna make more videos for you. I wanna know what you're most interested in. Based upon my latest poll, a lot of people wanted me to go ahead and focus on backgrounds. Uh, I want specifics. Like, so if you have any specific questions regarding backgrounds that you need some help with, let me know in the comments and I will do my best to sort things out and prepare videos in that, um, in that fashion. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.